evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Leo Meyer and my co-host, Dolly Curtis, bringing you a new edition of Backstage Buzz. We have kind of a very special guest for you t- tonight, a gentleman who's who's very quiet about being one of the kingpins in public television. And ladies and gentlemen of the audience, I want to introduce you to Mr. Jerry Franklin, the head and CEO for many years of Connecticut Public Television. Jerry, welcome on board. Hi, Jerry. Thanks, Leo. Hello, Dolly. Great to be here with you guys. Well, we're very, very, very happy to be able to chat with you tonight and that you've taken a a few minutes of your valuable time to be with us. We we're, we're, have a million questions to ask you about Connecticut Public Television to relocate in Norwalk. Um, how did that come about? And and, t- and tell us a little bit about about this proposal. Well, I'd be delighted to. It started, I guess, about three years ago when we had decided that um, it was uh, it was several years. Uh, uh, too late to uh, start a strategic plan. But we said we really need to get get going on, on a real strategic plan. We have done several over the past, because uh, I've been here now for three decades. Mm-hmm. And we've had two other previous uh, strategic plans, and there was a beautiful, nice uh, booklet that was produced. And to make a long story short, it went straight on the shelf, and we never really implemented it. So we said we really want a different kind of a strategic plan. We really want to uh, do something differently because all of the market forces were conspiring against us. We had some board members who were saying, you know, we really are sitting on some burning platforms, meaning the traditional form of funding public broadcasting, and we have radio and television. And uh, we looked around and said, wow, you know, we really need to reinvent ourselves. And I realize that's a lofty phrase, but how can we future proof the company? So we went to the Knight Foundation down in Miami, Florida, and said we really need some help. We need to get serious about uh, planning for the future. So the Knight uh, made us uh, a very uh, substantial grant to us, and they told us about a company called IDEO, I-D-E-O, because uh, we, we were talking to some really uh, major league uh, firms, uh, such as McKinsey and the Boston Consulting Group, and, but we discovered this uh, based uh, this company based in San Francisco called IDEO, and they have done some extraordinary work with hospitals. They worked with uh, NBC, helped NBC and the Today Show kind of transform itself. They use a human-centered design focus. Anyway, to make a long story short, we hired them. They spent about six, seven months with us. One of their recommendations, and there were hundreds of recommendations, they said you need to find new ways of supporting uh, yourself. We don't receive any direct state support, and 5% of our budget comes directly from the federal government. But they said, you need some new sources of funding, and you got to do more than just provide a radio and a television program. you got to figure out how to engage your various audiences, and they call the audiences communities. And so one of their recommendations was perhaps to uh, consider setting up an innovation center uh, and so we looked around the state, and we said, where would be a great location for an innovation center? And believe it or not, stars were aligning and focusing on Norwalk, Connecticut. And so that's what we uh, said, okay, that'll be uh, our, our uh, second home, if you will. We'll maintain our Hartford base, but we want to relocate many of our activities in the Norwalk area. So that's really how it started. So I see. So the move on will not be totally from Hartford. You will keep... You will keep some of the, some of the activities alive in, in Hartford. Yeah, indeed. What we will have in Norwalk in this innovation center, we have a for-profit production company. Uh, it's the former Palace Productions uh, out of Norwalk. Mm-hmm. Uh, they now uh, are owned by Connecticut Public Broadcasting. So we have a joint venture with uh, Palace Productions slash Media Vision. That's our for-profit production company. It exists uh, to provide production services, whether it's web-based, graphics, or computer-based. And uh, and the sole purpose of providing these services is to generate a profit, which are then plowed back into the not-for-profit Connecticut public broadcasting parent. So that's one component. We'll have the production company. We have an association with the Norwalk Public Schools. 
uh, where we'll take about 50 high school seniors from the Norwalk High School. They will come and spend their entire day with us. Uh, and it's a special curriculum designed by us and the uh, school administration at the Norwalk Public School Department, and where we teach uh, life skills using the media. We're not trying to teach all of these uh, young, uh, young uh, students uh, how to become television producers or radio uh, personalities, uh, but uh, motivate them to stay in college and use media to help tell digital stories, whether it's stories for the media our stories for the Aetna Life Insurance Company. So, so it's a production company, it's an association with the schools, and then thirdly, we formed an association with the Stanford Center for Innovation. They uh, will do a joint venture with us, uh, and we, this will be an incubation uh, type uh, of, uh, of, of an environment where this, uh, young people or recent graduates who wish to start a company or they want to uh, the invent something, if you will, you know, eight or ten of them a year, will spend time with us in our innovation center. We, we give them administrative support, legal support, uh, technical support, and we encourage them, you know, to, uh, to um, launch their company, take it public, or um, finish the, uh, the, 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 the launching of their, of their uh, uh, product, if you will. And we would take uh, an equity position in some of those properties. So, again, that's another way, uh, an alternative way of funding uh, public broadcasting. Now, this innovation uh, center will be on Wall Street in Norwalk? Is, uh, yes. is that correct? Yeah. We were looking. We, we had selected South Norwalk as the place to be. And uh, we went to... Uh, uh, some of the state uh, officials, uh, primarily uh, Catherine Smith, who's the commissioner of the uh, Department of uh, Economic and Community Development, I wanted her advice about uh, an, an innovation center, and uh, she was very blunt. She said, "Jerry, I have there are 17 innovation centers now in the state," and she said most of them uh, couldn't survive without state funding. She said, my challenge to you is to find a way for your innovation center to become self-sufficient and to do so quickly. So we think we've done that. We think from day one, uh, we will be uh, self-sufficient. I mean, that is our plan. So then we approached the state in a formal way. We said, okay, uh, here we are. Here's our business plan. Uh, here's what will be included in the, in the uh, innovation center. But we need some help launching this. And so that's where we're asking the state for some upfront uh, investment, uh, so we can launch this uh, in a in a uh, in a you know very smart way. However, we we have already launched it. We are renting space now as we speak in South Norwalk, and the production component of what we're talking about uh, started several months ago, and the uh, the association with the school. Uh, that will start uh, next September, uh, and, and we have already the, the the innovation center, the joint venture with the Stanford Center for Innovation. That has also that commitment has been made. So we are we are already uh, developing this. Oh, Jerry, does this have anything to do with the theater that's about to be? Yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Dolly. That's that's one of our fourth uh, partnerships. Uh, we have a, a contract with the Wall Street Theater. We see some enormous potential of being next door to a performing arts uh, center. Not I'm very door. familiar with that. That used to be a little vaudeville house. Oh, indeed, indeed. So I was uh, in business we, we for are, many, a talking. number of years on Wall Street, uh, where I operated this Broadway scenery contracting company. Mm. At number yeah, we're ten, very Wall excited Street. About having them as a partner, uh, <laughs> well, and we, we I've, expect. I'm, we, I've retired, and the, and the company that was sold off. But uh, but I, 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 as a matter of fact, I produced three three plays in that theater. Ah, well, you'll have yeah. to come back and visit. But we certainly about will. The association <laughs> with the theater, we see some enormous uh, public media programming. Absolutely, uh, that will come out of that it's, theater. It's a it's a. It's a perfect setup for for you. Yep, we think it is. 
Natalie, were you near the trolley barn? Were you? I was in the trolley you were barn. In the trolley that was barn. my facility. That's the end of Wall Street. At, right by the Wall, by the uh, newspaper. What used to be the uh, uh, Norwalk Hour across the street. The, the 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 famous trolley barn was built during the Civil War, and then have several businesses had it before I was in there. And uh, I was there for a number of years until we, we moved the whole operation to Bru- to Bridgeport. But, mm. uh, but um, and while I was there, that, th- that theater was so, sort of boarded up and not used very much. And we decided, oh, let's put on, <laughs> it was Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland, Summer Stock, you know, let's put on <laughs> a few shows. I, I did a production of The Glass Menagerie there and uh, uh, with, with, of all people, Vivian Blaine. And then I had Siobhan McKenna come in and do a, a one-woman wo- show called Here Are Ladies. And we also mounted a production of Mary Poppins on that little stage. It's a charming, char- charming f- f- facility. And it, uh, hopefully with the with money spent on re- renovating it, it'll be very, very workable. So the question well, is it, parking, it, isn't it, it though, that Jerry? that rich history that, that motiv- us, motivates us. We are convinced that... Uh, we're going to do some great work uh, with our friends from the Wall Street Theater. But, but I'm bringing up that question again about the parking, because the art cinema is right behind it, isn't it? Yes, we are talking to the ofi- state officials and city officials about parking, and uh, we, we've got it's about a two-year plan because uh, there's an awful lot of money being spent in that part of town. And so we have made some suggestions about uh, uh, parking and talking to the state and the city because parking right now, if we were there today, would would be a real problem. I'm hearing that from people who like to go to the Isaac Street movies, the cinema, and they say the parking is atrocious right now. Yeah, it is. I am hoping that that's going to be addressed. It has to be. It has to be. I mean, for the theater. I mean, it's going to, it'll affect the theater more than it will us. You know, Jerry, I lived in Newark for 20 years, and it's a very diverse and interesting community. And all the video production was down at the Palace Theater, which you first mentioned. It was all right. in South Norwalk, all these little companies that could do specialized things with digital, you know, it was way ahead of itself. So that's still going on or not, that area? Yeah, that's the facility we are renting, and, and that's where we are now. You know, and uh, you know, and we we were planning to renovate that theater and stay there. But that was all sort of converted to 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 television studio, wasn't yes. it? Yes, yes, it was. But well, mm-hmm. they still have a very nice stage there, and so uh, you know, and that we have not ruled that out tr- uh, entirely, but uh, we have to be uh, sensitive since the state. Um, if, if the state gives us the in, in, uh, through the bonding uh, process the money we need to launch this, which is three and a half million dollars, the state is uh, leaning heavily uh, on us to go into the Wall Street area, which, which we would do. You know, we've already negotiated uh, with uh, with the bank, the Fairfield County uh, Savings Bank. They've been a tremendous partner. Yeah, and they have uh, parking, which could be available to right, to right, the right. So all indications are that we will be going into the Wall Street area. But uh, we've got a fantastic plan B, and that's to stay where we are, in the, uh, in the Palace Theater in, the, uh, the, uh, in South Norwalk. Wasn't it the City Hall, too, though? I'm getting this confused. I thought the Palace Theater is in this very intricate, interesting place, but it was a, a City Hall at one time. But Leah, yeah, it's right s- down the street from the city hall. Oh, it's down the street. It's, it's, on the, it's same. In the same block. Okay. So it's Main Street, South Main Street, or. Yeah. North- yes. yes. Okay. And we are renting that facility. We're the only entity in that entire building right now. Oh, all right. So what is it you think you're going to do? I mean, Leo and I were talking about some of what you've done. We know you've been there 30 years, which is amazing. When one person is the CEO of a. P- very, the continuity really works. <laughs> the consistency, yeah. you know, of one person. <laughs> we see it a lot in some of the theaters that Leo's worked with, like Michael Price. Good. Oh speed. yes, Michael is. Michael is. He's one of our board members. Oh, he would be good because he's in that area. Yeah, he's West terrific. 
and he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I tell him, you know, and I've, I've known him, uh, admired him for years. I said, okay, Michael, I, where is that New York Rolodex of yours? <laughs> I, I, want you to open, I want you to open it up and, and, and bring them to the Wall Street Theater. And he said, okay, Jerry. He said, all right, Jerry. Uh, well, he'll, he, he he'll, he'll, jump in, he'll jump into the lifeboat and, 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 and help paddle. You know, the he's, interesting he's a, he's a thing wonderful fellow. is that Cablevision, which has been, you know, the major television generating that News 12 is leaving. Right. It's just, well, they were purchased again, and that was, I was unaware that was going to happen. I'd been there for 28 years myself. I have a lot of fondness for some of the people, I guess, who will not, no longer be working there. Yeah. Yeah, they're on my. I want to reach out. To, I know some of the people who work there right. for, for News Twelve, and there's there's a lot of talented people there, uh, whom we whom we could uh, you know would love to work with. Well, they have a lot of experience because they've been three decades running there, generating that News Twelve program and other programs. They used to do more. Remember, they used to have the Fairfield Exchange. Now now they have Meet the Leaders, but they do do several shows. There are some people there, I think you're right, that would be good for you to talk. Yep, I, w- I would agree, and, w- and we intend to do that. It's a shame that we're losing News 12. I've still been in shock over it, because it was a resource that we had in Fairfield County. Well, it was one of the best cable news services in the country. Well, they always, w- if you could be in touch with them, they might send a, a cameraman up and do a, you know, what would end up being a 30-second piece, but it was still very helpful. Yep, oh, I agree. I agree. So I'm going to miss that a lot. We we will. They were they were a terrific partner. We partnered with them on a couple of projects, and they were they were very good. And we will miss them. The state will miss them. But you're doing a completely separate thing, right? Because you're not going to yeah. be. Will you generate any programming from? Will you be generating any program from some? We uh, we will have a news bureau uh, stationed uh, in in this uh, innovation center. But but yes, we for example we have had conversations um, with. Are you familiar with the company called Ted Med? It's a, it's an offshoot of Ted Talks, right? And they're headquartered in Stanford. So uh, we have approached them, and we have a tentative agreement to. Uh, we want to become their media, their public media partner. So we envision uh, the the Ted Med hour, if you will that would originate uh, in Norwalk as a co-production between Connecticut Public Broadcasting and Ted Med. And so there would be productions uh, like that, and then we, we are envisioning regular programming uh, coming from uh, f- uh, from the theater. From the new theater. Uh, produced right. by the theater and Connecticut Public Television. Well, we could certainly do with some fresh, <laughs> fresh programming and, and fresh ideas because... The commer- commercial television is just embarrassing with with what what, what you see on yeah, yeah, on the yeah, airwaves. A lot, people, a lot of people ask us because um, we're having strong strong audiences. Are we've got double digit audience increases uh, for radio and television, and we we have a good property, you know that we have an excellent product, but the commercial competition is not as stiff as it used to be. Shall we say? Because a lot of a lot of the decisions at the commercial level now are made not locally, but they're every, everybody is consolidating, so everybody's getting away from local, and so we're trying to drill more roots into the local soil, and we think that's going to be one of the saving points of Connecticut Public Broadcasting is to become even more local than we've ever been. And Connecticut has a very rich talent pool to draw from. Oh, my gosh. Oh, absolutely. From 30 to 40 miles from where we're sitting today, you know, my God, is some of the richest talent uh, pool in the country. Of course, because New York City being the base and the people (laughs) living within an hour of there. Yep. So we want to tap into that. All the Broadway Broadway people live out here. (laughs) Right. Right, and are paying taxes here and what have you. They but all the auditioning is being done in New York City, Leo, right? And the rehearsals, a lot of the rehearsing for what we oh. see, it's being done in the city. Well, there's no reason it can't be done out here. Look at the number of theaters that are operating. Yeah, Twenty-nine, yeah. and, and yeah, well, very we successfully. Do, uh, we do a live. Um, well, it's live on tape, 
but we've gotten a lot of Broadway stars uh, to come. We we tape a show, it's a series for PBS in Old Saybrook, just up the road. And the live, it's called Live from the Kate. Right. It's at the Catherine uh, Hepburn Arts Center. But there's no reason we can't do programming uh, uh, the Wall Street Theater just like that. Exactly. We, are, we already have a slot with on the, within PBS. We do a, a national show from Hartford uh, and, and Norfolk, Connecticut, from Infinity Hall Live, coupled with uh, Live from the Cape. And we're hoping that the next, uh, the third piece of that would be Live from the uh, Wall Street Theater. Mm-hmm. And also the transportation system's pretty good there. Yep. There's two train stations, throughway. I mean, even though we know it's all congested, but with a couple of highways, everything comes in through there. Right. So that has to be a plus. Yeah, Jerry, the, what the kind south, of time the south Norwalk facility you, was, uh, for that reason, was uh, was a little better. Because plus it's, it's right uh, there. Closer access to Metro North, not a direct access from Metro North to Wall Street. You know, so we gotta we gotta figure out how to how to move people, you know, efficiently from the train to the Wall Street Theater. Mm-hmm. Get this walking distance. Yep. Okay. You'll fall on it practically, right? <laughs> well, how, what kind of a time time schedule do you anticipate? Uh, we need to be. I mean, the school piece. Um, they are pushing us to start next September. Great. So uh, we're going to be hard pressed to meet that schedule in our new facility. In fact, we just had a meeting last week and said we may have to start the school training piece in South Norwalk, uh, and then when the renovation is finished on Wall that's, Street, we would move everything to Wall Street. So it's uh, com- it, everything would be complete uh, with, within a year. So um, a year from now, essentially, or a year from uh, December or January, everything should be completed. They showed but- photographs in the Connecticut Post last week of interior shots inside the theater... And it looks like it's very moving quite along. Oh, and it they, is. It they is. were even was... saying February, March, they thought yep. there might be some use of it. Yep. Yeah, I was down there last week, you know, just uh, kicking the tires, so to speak. <laughs> and there was an awful lot of activity going on inside that theater. So they 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 appear to be right on their schedule. Well, Leo Meyer, who you have there on the phone, has so much history and years of experience working in theaters in New York City and redoing sets from Goodspeed that went to his shop and before it went to New York to get resized, that Leo would be a good person <laughs> to bring in there to take a look at the theater to see if he had any... Dolly, I'm retired. I know I'm you retired. are, Leo, but if somebody... Stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he could spend a couple of hours with me, though, right, Dolly? All right, if you could pick him up. <laughs> no, no, I'll do that. No, I, you're absolutely right. He'd be a terrific resource. I'll He's take old. you up on that. When Thanks, you take, Dolly. When you go out to lunch with Leo, it's like Wikipedia. It's like sitting next to Wikipedia, <laughs> the living real one. Yeah, no, I, I can tell that just from our conversation. And what well, I ran the I ran the studio for, for, for just hours short of forty years, so it was a long, long time, a lot of a lot of work in New York and, and and throughout the country. But it was, as we say, a good run. So while they're talking about all these uh, Broadway shows that they're redoing, Leo did the originals. So he's a wealth of information. Wow, I'm I'm honored to be in your presence. Well, if, if, if I can help you in any way whatsoever, uh, uh, believe me, please do call, call upon me. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. I appreciate that. Because what you're doing wonderful, wonderful work, and uh, CP, CPTV is the, is a beacon in the in the dreary night, let me tell you. <laughs> and NPR is nice. not bad. Very kind of you to say that. You, you must be very proud of the work that you've done there. I, and, uh, I mean, I love. I mean, I knew in the tenth grade what I wanted to do professionally, so it's just been a it's been a a, a, a joy, a, a work of joy. I've loved it. You know, Leo was uh, doing early television. I've had, I'm not that old, but I worked a television show with somebody who did CBS early fifties, and Leo worked on Playhouse ninety, didn't you, Leo? Do worked on Playhouse ninety, Omnibus. 
the hit parade, many, many of the many shows. When it was real high level television, and, and it was when it was still black and white. Yep, yep, yep. In, the, in those days, but in those days, uh, we had what, what four or five channels, and that was it. And and it was just fine with the four or five channels. Now we have thousands of channels, and you don't want to look at any of it. <laughs> yeah, well, so, just look what's happening to Facebook. You know, they started as a technology company, uh, right. and that's how the founders looked at it. This is a technology company, but now it has become, you know, the world's largest distributor of news and information. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. kind of scary because a lot of the news that you find on Facebook, it's put there without an editor, without any researching at all. It's just it's news because I say it's news. I know the truth. They, they slap that's it on there, and that's it. Well, it's really upsetting to people who are journalists. They just can't handle it. Oh no! It's 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 from a, and for our democracy. I just don't think that's healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, Jerry, are the big the big hands on our clock have okay. moved around <laughs> around and they're moving right to tell us that it's time to say good night and uh, to thank you for yeah that was spending very this time Jerry. with us. It's my pleasure. And uh, Dolly and Leo, I look forward to uh, seeing you face to face. Yes, Thank you very much for this opportunity. I hope it happens soon. Once again, Jerry Franklin, Dolly, good night. Good night.